Hello dears, how are you all? Welcome to our YouTube channel Swapna Raj Story. We brings a new interesting learning story. So please watch the video till the end. Before starting the video we request you that. If you are new in our channel, then please subscribe our YouTube channel. To inspire us please like the video and share with your friends that they can listen interesting learning stories. Oh, let's enjoy. Good morning students. Good morning ma'am. Today I start a new topic. My greatest Olympic prize written by Jesse Owens. Wow, thank you. Cleveland, Jesse Owens, Unniso Tera. Unniso Asi was an American track and field athlete who specialized in sprints and long jump. He participated in the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin, Germany, where he achieved international fame by winning four gold medals, one each in the 100 meters, 200 meters, long jump, and as member of the Char X 100 meters relay race team. The Olympic Games is the world's foremost sports competition featuring summer and winter sports in which athletes from all over the world participate in a variety of competitions. In this essay, Jesse Owens shares his experiences of 1936 summer. Olympics held in Berlin when patriotic feelings were running high in Germany. However, Owens did not bother, as he trusted in his abilities. He tells his stunning story about forging a lasting friendship with a German, putting differences aside for the love of the games. Please watch the video till the end how Owens reacted to the performance of his rival. It was the summer of 1936. The Olympic Games were being held in Berlin. Because Adolf Hitler childishly insisted that his performers were members of a master race, nationalistic feelings were at an all-time high. I wasn't too worried about all this. I trained, sweated and disciplined myself. For six years with the games in mind. While I was going over on the boat, all I could think about was taking home one or two of those gold medals. I had my eye, especially on the long jump. A year before, as a university student, I'd set the world record of 26 feet 8 and a quarter inches. Everyone kind of expected me to win that Olympic event hands down. I was in for a surprise. When the time came for the long jump trials, I was startled to see a tall boy hitting the pit at almost 26 feet on his practice leaps. He turned out to be a German named Lars Long. I was told that Hitler had kept him under wraps evidently hoping he would win the jump. Suppose that if Long won, it would add some new support to the Nazis. Aryan superiority theory. After all, I am a Negro. A little hot under the collar about Hitler's ways, I determined to go out there and really show the Führer and his master race who was superior and who wasn't. Anger is the worst enemy of an athlete. An angry athlete is an athlete who will make mistakes, as any coach will tell you. I was no exception. On the first of my three qualifying jumps, I leapt from several inches beyond the takeoff board for a no jump. I was even worse. Did I come 3000 miles for this? I thought bitterly to fail in the trials and make a fool of myself. Walking a few yards from the pit, I kicked disgustedly at the ground. Suddenly I felt a hand on my shoulder. What's happened then? Dot. I turned to look into the friendly blue eyes of the tall German long jumper. 
He had easily qualified for the finals on his first attempt. He offered me a firm handshake. Jesse Owens, I'm Luz Long. I don't think we've met. He spoke English. Well, go with a German twist to it. Glad to meet you. Then, trying to hide my nervousness, I added, How are you? I'm fine. The question is, how are you? What do you mean? Something must be eating you. Proud the way foreigners are, when they've mastered a bit of American slang. You should be able to qualify with your eyes closed. Believe me, I know it. I told him and it felt good to say that to someone. For the next few minutes, we talked together. I didn't tell Long what was eating me, but he seemed to understand my anger and he took pains to reassure me. Although he'd been schooled in the Nazi youth movement, he didn't belly weigh in the Aryan supremacy business any more than I did. We laughed over the fact that he really looked the part though. An inch taller than I, he had a lean, muscular frame, clear blue eyes, fair hair and a strikingly handsome face. Finally, seeing that I had calmed down somewhat, he pointed to the takeoff board. He said, Look, why don't you draw a line a few inches at the back of the board and aim at making your takeoff from there? You'll be sure not to foul and you certainly ought to jump far enough to qualify. What does it matter if you're not first in the trials? Tomorrow is what counts. What's happened? Suddenly all the tension seemed to ebb out of my body as the truth of what he said hit me. Confidently, I drew a line a full foot behind the board and proceeded to jump from there. I qualified with almost a foot to spare. Do you believe in the adage, a friend in need is a friend indeed? Yes ma'am but it's very rare case. Then listen the story forget it. That night I walked over to Luz Long's room in the Olympic village to thank him. I knew that if it hadn't been for him I probably wouldn't be jumping in the finals the following day. We sat in his quarters and talked for two hours about track and field, ourselves, the world situation, and a dozen other things. When I finally got up to leave, we both knew that a real friendship had been formed. Luz would go out to the field the next day trying to beat me if he could. But, I knew that he wanted me to do my best even if that meant my winning. As it turned out, Luz broke his own past record. What's happened then? I think he got angry upon you. No. In doing so, he pushed me. On to a peak performance. I remember that at the instant I landed from my final. Jump the one which set the Olympic record of 26 feet 5 and a quarter inches. He was at my side, congratulating me. Despite the fact that Hitler glared at us from the stands. Not a hundred yards away, Luz shook my hand hard and it wasn't a fake. Smile with a broken heart, sort of grip, either. Congratulations. You could melt down all the gold medals and cups I have. And they wouldn't be a plating on the 24 karat friendship. I felt for Luz long at that moment. I realized then too, that Luz was the epitome of what Pierre de Coubertin, founder of the modern Olympic Games, must have had in mind when he said. The important thing in the Olympic Games is not winning but taking part. The essential thing in life is not conquering but fighting well. Wow man what a interesting story. Please like share and subscribe our YouTube channel to stay connected with us.
To get the fastest notifications of our interesting videos press the bell icon and on all notifications. Bye bye, see you in the next video.